bless your name today. Honor and praise as we lift up our hands to the Lord. Welcome to Living the Abundant Life with Dr. Samuel Meredith. All things are upheld by the words of his power. Get ready to discover the laws that govern the kingdom of God and how those laws can be applied in your life through active faith. That is the picture of what God wants to do for you in your life. And now, Living the Abundant Life with Dr. Samuel Meredith. Well, praise God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Well, if you have your Bibles, turn to Ephesians chapter 6. We'll begin reading at verse 11 again. That's Ephesians 6 and 11. And it reads, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. That you may able to be able to stand against the wiles, the trickery, the strategy, the schemes of the devil. You must understand that the enemy is scheming against us. His little imps, they're observing us, what we do. They have a little dossier on us. And it is their desire to come up with a trap, a strategic plan to take us out. The word of God says that we may be able to stand against these schemes, these trickery, this, these schemes or wiles of the devil. Now, turn to 2 Timothy chapter 1. We'll begin reading at verse 7. It says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Again, for God has not given us the spirit of fear. See, fear is part of the enemy's arsenal. It is a weapon of the enemy that he loves to wage against us. But remember, he's very strategic. He will plot. He will have a plan for our demise. Now, let me give you an example of this. This is a true story. There was a man who worked for a railroad company, and he always would say, I'll never want to be stuck in a refrigerated railroad car. Well, years later, he he was working for whatever reason in this refrigerated railroad car and he opened up the latch, the latch to open up the door, but the latch broke. Well, the next morning they found the man. He obviously had spent the night there. They found the man. He was dead. And so they were wondering what what happened here? So they took him to the doctor and according to the autopsy reports, the man froze to death. But this was the kicker. The refrigerated car didn't work. It was not operating properly. The freezer part, it did not work. What happened here? Man feared being trapped in a refrigerated box car. That was his fear. Job said, the thing I greatly fear came upon me. Fear is simply faith in reverse. Whatever we fear, we will draw that thing to us. And unfortunately, the man died. He froze to death. If you notice this, if you notice the enemy had a carefully strategic plot out plan for this man. Those imps heard what he said. I never want to be stuck in a refrigerated box car. And so the enemy set this thing up. Understand the enemy is the little God of this world. He set this thing up for this man. And the thing that he greatly feared, he drew it upon himself. He was stuck in that car and his thoughts ran wild and he froze to death. Although the refrigerated car was not working. Well, once again, the enemy has a strategic plan for all of us. Now, the enemy is very crafty. He used fear against this man. But can I share something with you? He'll use fear against all of us, even dear Christians, especially those who believe in the faith. The enemy has cleverly packaged fear where it is palatable. It is acceptable. We look at it and we say, OK, it's OK. He's packaged in a form of a horror movie. You may say, Brother Pastor, there's nothing wrong with a horror movie. Well, let's look at this very carefully. The enemy has sold us a lie. What do you mean, Brother Pastor, a lie? The Word of God says in 
first John four and 18, it says fear has torment. In other words, it's impossible to have fear without torment. Let me say it another way. It's uh, listen, if you have water, you're going to have wetness. Wetness is associated with water. You cannot separate the two. Let's go back to fear. Now the word of God says fear has torment, but the enemy has sold us this lie saying that, listen, you can be entertained by fear with no torment. In other words, you can watch this horror movie without any repercussions of torment. After all, I mean, brother pastor, it's just a movie. It's not real. I'm smart enough. I'm old enough. I'm not a little child anymore. I'm old enough to understand that it's not real. Well, let me ask you this. What do you believe in God for? What are you standing in faith for? What do you believe in God for? Maybe you want God to bless you with something. Perhaps you want God to deliver you from something. Well, then let me ask you this question. Is it okay for you to just imagine, have thoughts about your demise? Imagine these thoughts that you won't get what you believe in God for or what God has promised you won't come to pass or God will not deliver you from that. Is it okay to think about that? We would quickly say no. Why? Because, you know, the scripture says as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. You have the revelation that I can't dwell on those thoughts, because if I dwell on those thoughts, then those thoughts will come to pass. Well, what do you think about the big screen? You're actually watching fear being demonstrated. I mean, think about it. You have this supernatural evil force or being that's destroying people's lives. Do you think you really can watch this uh, fear take place without some type of torment? Once again, you may say, brother pastor, I understand what you're saying. I even agree what you're saying, but I really don't see how torment is associated with that. After all, I'm not dreaming any dreams because once again, I know that this is not real. Well, let's look at this for a moment. Anytime that you open up the door for the enemy in terms of fear, when you watch that movie for two or three hours, you have an open door. You create an inroad for the enemy to come to you. Let me say it a different way. You cannot play on the enemy's playground without him playing with you. I mean, let's think about it. The enemy knows how to make that thing inviting. You know, you on your spiritual journey and you see this playground. And you and you walk into the gates of that playground. The enemy will play with you. He will entertain you. Listen, he will listen. He'll say, look, let me push you down the slide. Let me push you on the swing. Let, let me turn this miracle around for you. Let, let, you can't play with the seesaw by yourself. Let me play with you. The enemy will entertain you. But you must understand when you leave that enemy's enemy's playground while you're saying, bye, Mr. Devil, I've enjoyed you watching fear. Can I share something with you? That enemy is waving back at you and saying, yes, I'm going to visit you soon. You may say, brother, pastor, once again, how is this going to happen? Well, understand once again, this is a spiritual law. If you entertain the enemy or you watch the movie, the enemy is going to have an opportunity to visit you. It will be in the, 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 at the most inopportune time, if you will, the time when you're at the weakest moment, that is when he will present those fearful thoughts towards you with torment. See what you, what you fail to realize is this. You all of a sudden, you have issues yourself. You may have issues of gaining weight. You have issues that your spouse may cheat on you or may leave you. You may have issues. You may have this issue where you have this big presentation to present. You, you're going to present before a large uh, amount of people that you've never uh, spoken in front of those that amount of uh, uh, people before. Or, you know, it could be that you have this big presentation for, for, in front of all the company's major executives. 
See, the enemy knows what you've been dealing with. Remember, I told you they have a dossier. They're writing everything about you. They're setting up a strategic trap on you. Now, let me say this. It gets deeper. What if, see, the enemy, once again, he's strategic. The enemy knows you have a doctor's appointment the next or a week or two. Now, God has already delivered you from cancer. God supernaturally healed your body. Or could it be this? God supernaturally delivered you from those suicidal audiations. See, what you, underst what you must understand, we as humans, we love to com compartmentalize things. Uh, we, okay, this, this movie, uh, I can watch this movie with nothing, but understand spiritual forces, there's no compartmentalization. It can move in any area or at any time. The enemy has a strategic plan for all of us. But today we're talking about fear. When you watch those horror movies, you're, you're being entertained by fear. There's no such thing as you once again being entertained by fear without tormenting being present. So now all of a sudden, you have no idea, you can't even make the connection because you watched that movie. Now issues where you once, once at one time has, been, has defeated the enemy, you walked in victory, now you're suffering these tormented thoughts. Where are these thoughts coming from? These thoughts of suicide, these thoughts of cancer. I, I mean, I defeated cancer, now all of a sudden the enemy is, is, is just plaguing my mind with these thoughts that I may die. You, you beat cancer this uh, last time, but you won't beat it this time. And they're constantly bombarding your mind over and over and over again. You have this fear all of a sudden. You have to give this, pre this big presentation, and now all of a sudden you you're afraid. Where did this come from? It came from the movie. Because once again, I told you, when you left that movie, you were entertained by, the, by that fearful movie. You even said, boy, I really enjoyed that movie. But understand the enemy is waving back at you saying, listen, I'm going to visit you soon. When he comes, it's always at the, at the most inopportune time, the time where you're at your weakest, the time where you don't need to have time. We don't have time. That's when he's going to attack when you're at your greatest uh, area of weakness, if you will. Now, let's look at this. I can look at a cup of water. I can look at a bottle of water. You know what? I can do, I can look at the water and you know what? I have no concerns about getting wet. Although wetness is associated with water, but I can look at the water. You know what? I have no problems. I'm not worried about getting wet. It's only after I partake of the water, if I drink the water or if I take a shower or if I jump in the swimming pool or if I just pour some water in my hand, if I play with the water, it's only when I engage the water is when I will experience the wet. So it is with fear. A fearful thought may come through my mind, but I can shoot it down. I can cast that thought down. You know what? I may see a movie poster, but I can keep on walking and it never harms me. Why? Because I'm not a, I'm not engaged. I'm not experiencing the fear. But when I open up myself to experience the fear, then I going I will experience torment. Those tormenting thoughts. Fear has torment. See, then the enemy can bombard my mind once again with these thoughts of my demise. He'll show me pictures of my mind. And you know what? I will become fearful. And he once again, he'll wage war. Once again, the word of God talks about us being able to stand against the wiles of the devil. God has not given us the spirit of fear. We open up the door for the enemy to give us this spirit of fear. The enemy is tricky and he is crafty. And many people are deceived by this. You know, in 2 uh, Timothy chapter 2, verse 25, I think it's quite interesting. It says, those who oppose you, those who oppose this teaching. The word of God talks about how we have to gently instruct them. Now, why is this? 
in the hope that God will grant them repentance that will lead them to the knowledge of the truth. God wants them to have knowledge of the truth. Why is this? So that they may come to their senses. They may wake up and they may escape the snare or the traps of the devil, devil that who takes them captive at his will. Did you hear what I just said? The word of God says the enemy takes them captive at his will. The devil takes them captive at his will. Those who are led astray, those who are, are ignorant of his devices. Remember the word of God says, least Satan gains an advantage of us. Let us not be ignorant of his devices. One of the devices of the enemy are these horror films. See, many of you all, you thinking, now, why am I dealing with this? Some of y'all may be going through PTSD. You have no idea how you're being tormented at night through these things that has happened to you, these, uh, whether it's you were fighting in the war or, or what post-traumatic syndrome, whatever has happened to you. But you don't understand the, the enemy is attacking you through those movies. See, you're saved. You believe in God. God, please deliver me. God, I believe the blood of Jesus. I believe all of these things. But how is the enemy? The Holy Spirit wants to shed light on how the enemy is attacking. The word of God says the enemy takes you captive at his will. As long as you opening up that door to be entertained by fear, because the enemy has sold us the lie that you can be entertained by fear without torment being present. As we just stated, we know that's impossible. That is not true. So what's the solution to this? Well, it's quite obvious. One is to close the door to the enemy. But let's go to James uh, 4 and 7. James 4 and 7, it says, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. But if you notice the first step, it says we must submit ourselves. Some verses may say humble yourselves. We must submit ourselves before God. Now, how do we submit ourselves? Well, if there is a horror movie that you want to watch, why don't you ask God, Lord Jesus do you want me to watch that horror movie? The word of God says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he will direct your path. If you acknowledge God, he's going to direct your path. You may with a sincere heart, you say, God, do you, listen, I want to. I'm curious about this horror movie. God, can, can I watch this horror movie? Ask him. After all, he's the author and finisher or developer of our faith. Why don't you ask the Lord Jesus Christ and the Lord Jesus Christ will tell you. Now, you may say you, you may say, well, I don't hear an answer. Well, check your heart inside. The word of God says, let the peace of God rule in your heart. Do you have a peace about going? Do you have a peace about going? I can tell you now, probably not. Probably not. That's how you submit yourselves before God. When you submit yourselves before God, then you can resist the enemy. Now, we all have been in times past. We all have been in places where we try to resist the devil and look like the devil wasn't going anywhere. Have you been there? I know I have. You say to the Lord rebuke you right now in the name of Jesus. The blood of the blood of Jesus is against you. You plead everything and that enemy is still bombarding you with those doggone thoughts. First of all, let me share something with you. You cannot resist the devil while you're currently being entertained by the enemy. That's one. Two, even afterwards, there is a high probability that after you walked away from that, that movie theater, he can bombard your thoughts. Not thoughts about the movie, but thoughts about your demise in whatever area that you're dealing with. Have you ever once again had those thoughts and you rebuking the enemy like he ain't going nowhere? Or he may leave. He may leave for a moment. Then about five minutes later, he comes back. If you notice, you're not operating in the power that you once had. What? Because you had you didn't submit yourself to God. You didn't acknowledge God in all of your ways. And you're wondering how all these attacks are coming against you. So what do we have to do? Once again, close the door. Stop watching those movies. We have to. It's, it's a good idea. Sometimes you may have to immerse yourself in the word of God. What do you mean? 
cut off all avenues and just focus on reading the word or listening to someone preach the anointed word of God. Now you may have to do this for a few days. It may be for a week. It may be a few weeks before you build your faith up or build your spirit man up to the point where it can resist the devil and the enemy flee and not return for a season. Now, if you notice, you have to do all of this for because you compromised for two or three hours for watching a movie because you did not acknowledge God. You did not submit to the father. You have to do all of this stuff that's more, that you have to spend more time than this two or three hours. Once again, it took for you to compromise. You got to spend all this time now building your spirit man back up. Why? Once again, because you did not submit yourself to God. Once again, when you don't submit yourself to God, the enemy does not have to flee. So once again, now you got to build yourself up for the enemy to now start fleeing from you. We all have been there. We all have done that in one shape, form, or fashion. The word of God says, once again, submit yourselves, then resist the devil. When you resist the devil, then he will flee. But even notice, when you submit yourself to God, you have the power to resist. And it's interesting. When you submit yourself to God, the enemy hears you. When you resist, he flees. But when you have not submitted yourself to God, once again, he'll stay there. He'll stay there, cross his leg, his leg and drink a cup of coffee. Why? Because you played on his playground. You played in his territory. Now he can come to you. So you all, the word God told us not to be ignorant of his devices. The enemy has planning. He's plotting the strategic plan, spiritual warfare, so he can continuously attack you in this certain area or an area where you've gained victory over him. He'll use this same tactic to render you, if you will, powerless, and you didn't even know it. But we thank God for the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, once again, wants to shed light on this subject. So once again, we close the door to the enemy, we, res we build ourselves up in our most holy, day uh, holy faith, and we resist the enemy so he can flee. You all, let me say this. This not only works or the enemy uses this tactic against us, is not, it's not only limited to fear, but it's also anger. There are certain movies that you don't need to watch if you know you have anger problems, because the only thing it's going to do is excite your passion. If you have some lust issues, there are certain steamy movies that you know you don't need to watch. If you have some personal issues, there are certain movies you don't need to watch. The only thing it's going to do is ignite those issues and place you under bondage. This is the way, let me say this, it's nothing wrong with watching movies, but you have to be careful with the movies that you're watching. The enemy uses this. Remember, when, I, when he does this, he's going to present some type of lie. Remember, when we talk about fear today, what's the lie I can enjoy Fear, I can be entertained by fear without the torment. You know, the torment is something else. If you notice, when you sow a seed, if you notice the harvest is much greater, in a spiritual sense, if you sow a seed, if you're entertaining fear, you've opened up your mind to fear, for that two or, three hour, two or three hours, you know you're gonna, the enemy's gonna attack you with a harvest. Seed time, it may not happen right away, but there's gonna be that inopportune time, seed time and harvest. The enemy, when he attacks you, once again, it's gonna be at your weakest moment. He's gonna try to present a harvest for you. He's gonna attack you not only with fear, but he's gonna hit you with the torment. What is torment? Those tormenting thoughts that's hitting you uh, back and forth uh, over and over again. He's just slinging those fiery darts at you over and over again. Those penetrative thoughts over and over again. You want you just want peace. And you don't understand once again, you have no idea where it came from. So you all, let's close the door to the enemy. Let's first of all, recognize the life of the enemy. If I entertain fear, torment is always going to be the result of it because fear, torment comes alongside fear. It's part of fear that harvest will be much greater than what I sowed.
or what I just looked at for two, three hours. It's going to be tormenting thoughts. That's the harvest of what you sowed. So let's close the door to the enemy. Let's not be tempted to believe that lie that I can once again be entertained by fear without the torment. Understand wherever I do, I have to be careful. Is God being glorified by this? Is God being glorified by this? If you think, if we go back to the example given, remember the first example we talked about the man who was uh, froze to death. He had a fear of being trapped in that refrigerated refrigerated box car, but it was the tormenting thoughts that came alongside those fear that fear is that can you imagine those thoughts? You're gonna die. It's cold in here. You're gonna freeze to death. His body reacted as if the refrigerator car was working. He felt all that. He had a terrible death based in fear. That's exactly what the enemy wants to do with all of us. But if you notice, fear alongside with fear, once it comes, torment. Torment is those tormenting thoughts. Those tormenting thoughts meant to get you to commit suicide, meant to get you to believe that you have cancer. Uh, and, and so what are you doing? You're creating an opportunity for that to manifest in your life. You all. Let's sh stop or shoot down those thoughts of fear. Once again, when we submit ourselves to God, we can walk in the power and the anointing authority. When we say, Satan, the Lord rebuke you, I cast that spirit of fear. We can recognize spirit, spirit of fear and we can cast those thoughts down without any thought or worry or concern that this fear or torment may come on us. Why? Because. The word of God says the enemy is under, far under our feet. Why? Because we're seated with Christ. So once again, let us stop with this madness, with the thought that we can entertain fearful thoughts or watch fearful movies, these horror movies without torment being associated with us. And let us live the abundant life. Amen. Give God a hand clap of praise. We bless your name today, honor and praise, as we lift up our hands to the Lord. This has been Living the Abundant Life with Dr. Samuel Meredith. We pray that you continue to gain more insight into God's Word as Dr. Meredith shares the good news of the laws that govern the kingdom and how those laws can be applied through the active faith in your life. Remember to tune in to KJBN 1050 AM every Tuesday and Thursday at 9 AM as Dr. Meredith encourages us with Bible-based laws that will help us to prosper in every aspect of our lives. Please send all correspondence to the address on the screen. And we thank you for watching Living the Abundant Life with Pastor Samuel Meredith. Our hands to the Lord.